This is Marianne Martindale from the Alliance for a Better Utah, and welcome to the Better Utah Beat. The Affordable Care Act, or Obamacare as it's often called, Utahns may not like it very much, but they definitely need it. Each year, Utah conducts a statewide survey to determine the health and health care of the residents. In previous years, the study has been viewed with some skepticism for its limited sampling and biased interpretation. However, this year they used a more comprehensive study model and have produced what many to believe is a much more accurate and credible study. The results of this study show a shocking difference between what had been previously reported and what is actually the stark health care reality of many Utahns. So here's what we learned. 368,000 adults, that's nearly a quarter of the Utah adult population, live without health insurance and as many as 12% of our children live without any kind of coverage. These new numbers are not only shocking, but should serve as a wake-up call, confirming that once and for all, the healthcare system in our country is broken and in desperate need of reform. It's important to remember, we already pay the medical bills of those without health insurance, whether it's through taxes, increased premiums, increased costs, When an uninsured inevitably visits the emergency room, the burden already falls on each one of us. While it has yet to be fully implemented, we've already started seeing the benefits of Obamacare. For example, more than 21,000 Utah seniors are saving an average of $500 per year on their prescriptions. More than a million Utahns no longer have lifetime limits. 600,000 Utahns are now getting preventative services for free. And $10 million was given to Utah to expand community health centers to improve the quality of care. While you may not be a fan of Obamacare in theory, it is difficult to deny the positive impact it's already having on Utahns. But to listen to elected officials and candidates call for the outright repeal of Obamacare without any alternative solution is aggravating to say the least. This was clearly evident this past week during the one and only debate between Dan Lillenquist and Orrin Hatch. They each took turns vilifying programs like Obamacare, but when they were asked what their plans would be to fix health care, neither could offer any real solution. These new and sobering statistics should at least give our current representatives and hopeful candidates pause. We believe it is not only irresponsible, but also dangerous to the public health at large to simply cry no without offering any real ideas for solving the health care crisis. Also in the news this week is the unusual primary race for state auditor. Let's be honest, when was the last time you remember paying attention to an auditor's race? Could you name the current auditor? But this year, former legislator John Dougal is challenging incumbent auditor Austin Johnson, and the race has moved from being a voter afterthought to a very public back-and-forth battle. For his part, Mr. Johnson is saying that Dougal not only does not understand the job of auditor, but also lacks the qualifications necessary to perform the job. Although it is not a requirement of the office, Mr. Johnson is a CPA, while Mr. Dougal has no accounting or auditing experience. Dougal fires back by saying that Johnson is not doing enough to encourage government transparency and should be conducting performance audits as well as investigating programs like Medicaid. The irony here, one of the ironies, is that Mr. Dougal's statements only serve to reinforce how little he really does know about the job. The role of the state auditor does not, in fact, encompass performance or Medicaid audits. There are many different auditors in Utah and each one is tasked with specific responsibility. For example, it is the job of the Medicaid Inspector General to probe into Medicaid. And as current State Auditor Johnson states, if he were to go beyond the scope of his job, he would be merely duplicating the efforts of other auditors and wasting taxpayer money, directly at odds with Dougal's current promises of frugality. But that's not the only irony to this story. We find it interesting that John Dougal is calling for more government transparency. Just one short year ago, the entire state of Utah was up in arms over HB 477, the legislature's anti-grandma bill. With that bill, they sought to remove the public from the process by preventing the people of Utah from monitoring legislators' official text messages and other forms of electronic communication effectively closing the door on transparencies so lawmakers could make secret deals without fear of public exposure. 85% of Utahns were opposed to that bill, and after letters, rallies, and a public outcry too loud to ignore, the legislature was forced to hold a special session to repeal the law. 
So, what do we find so ironic about HB 477 and this call by John Dougal for greater transparency in the auditor's office? The lawmaker who sponsored and pushed HB 477 forward was none other than John Dougal, the candidate now trying to convince the state he is the voice of transparency. Dougal is now claiming that he was actually fighting for transparency when he ran the anti-transparency bill, because he was, and I quote, just trying to start the conversation. I don't know about you, but ending all government transparency doesn't seem like the best way to start a conversation about it. It's not hard to imagine what would happen if John Dougal, despite having no background in accounting, is named the chief investigative accountant of the state, responsible for protecting the public from lawmakers, programs, or companies seeking to hide the truth. Until next week, this is Marianne Martindale from the Alliance for a Better Utah with this week's edition of The Better Utah Beat. Have a great week, and remember that together we can make a better Utah. For more information about the Alliance for a Better Utah's current projects, please visit betterutah.org and kickalecout.org.